We've got legendary trainer and commentator Teddy Atlas weighing in on Francis Ngannou's disappointing performance against Anthony Joshua last Friday night. For those who haven't been following, former UFC heavyweight champion Ngannou has made a surprise crossover into professional boxing over the last year, and his debut back in October against none other than WBC champ Tyson Fury was anything but amateur hour. That's right, the Cameroonian knockout artist nearly pulled off the unthinkable in his very first pro boxing match, going the full 12 rounds and arguably winning several of them against one of the slickest, most skillful heavyweights on the planet. Nganu's fearsome power and relentless pressure had the Gypsy King on the back foot for long stretches, and many observers scored the fight as a very narrow win for Fury. It was an eye-opening performance that had the entire boxing world buzzing about this crossover phenom's potential. Nganu's stellar debut was so impressive that the WBC ended up ranking him in the top 10 of their heavyweight rankings off that one fight alone. The future seemed incredibly bright for the transplanted MMA star in his new combat sports venture. However, that future outlook took a bit of a dim turn this past weekend when Nganu stepped into the ring against former unified heavyweight champion Anthony Joshua. The fight ended up being a short and highly unflattering one for the challenger. Yikes, that was not a pretty sight for Nanganu, who was dropped twice and then viciously stopped in the second round by a determined and dominant Joshua. It was a rude awakening of sorts after the high of the Fury fight, and had many questioning if Nanganu is truly cut out for this elite level of boxing after all. One man who was not at all surprised to see Nanu exposed on the big stage, legendary trainer and commentator Teddy Atlas. Here's what the outspoken voice had to say in the aftermath. He exposed an amateur because he did in reality. I know the great performance against Fury. I explained that it was great, but that was different. Now he had to react. I even think Nganu's confidence hurt him because he thought he could be more aggressive, and he was ready to be more aggressive. He was right in front of him. I thought that hurt him this time because he wasn't that guy yet. He was still an amateur, and we forgot that because of his brilliant performance against Fury. Joshua reminded us he was an amateur. He's not ready for prime time because he did what a top guy should do. You exposed him. You exposed the things he wasn't yet. Boom. Leave it to the always candid Atlas to pull no punches in his criticism. In his eyes, Nanu got massively exposed as being an amateur and simply not ready for the elite levels of boxing against a seasoned operator like Joshua. While Atlas did give Nganu credit for his gutsy fury performance, he stated that it was more of an aberration caused by a perfect storm of circumstances. An element of surprise, fury not taking him seriously enough at first, and Styles making a big difference. Styles makes fights. Fury's style was completely different from Joshua's, that's number one. It does influence fights. Atlas explained, no, two, something was missing that was there the first time that helped Nganu when he fought Fury. That something is the element of surprise. That's a big something, not a little something. Fury was ready physically, he was, I'm making no excuses. Tremendous job by Nganu, but Fury wasn't ready mentally. You couldn't be. It's almost not human to have taken him seriously, where every fiber of your body and mind would be ready for what was coming. It was his first pro fight, and you're the champion of the world. Huh. Atlas certainly raises some fascinating points about Nganu's flukish success against Fury. The veteran commentator believes there's no way Fury could have truly prepared himself, mind, body, and soul, for the possibility of a freak athletic phenom like Nganu giving him everything he could handle. That surprise factor, combined with the stylistic advantages a swarmer like Nganu enjoyed against Fury's fleet-footed, defensive-minded style, made for a perfect upset storm. But against a more aggressive, hard-charging technician like Joshua, Nganu unsurprisingly faltered. Does this mean Nganu is simply overmatched at the highest levels of boxing and was just a one-hit wonder with the Fury fight? Not necessarily, according to Atlas, there are still plenty of potential upsides, but obviously some rather glaring deficiencies and rawness in his overall game that can't be ignored after this latest disappointing performance. Listen, 
He showed shortcomings that an expert like me would know by looking at his amateur career. Of course he has shortcomings. There are things he can get better at. There's things he has to fix. You have to crawl before you can walk. You have to walk before you can run. He just started this boxing thing full time. He's still a baby. So he's got to fix some things. Balance. Too wide a stance which causes the balance issues, the fluidity of his punching being inconsistent. Top guys will expose that and take your balance away. His defense was non-existent. So he needs to work on all that. But the goods are there. He's got physical tools. He's got the grit and toughness from his MMA background. With the right people around him helping fix those holes, giving him more time to gain experience, he could still be a factor eventually in the heavyweight division with his immense power and athleticism. So while Atlas was certainly critical of Nganu's showing and lack of preparedness against Joshua, he does still see legitimate upside and potential there if the flaws can be ironed out over time. It's not all doom and gloom just yet, but for Atlas, this loss proved to be a much needed reset for everyone who got way too carried away hyping up Nganu as the second coming after just one impressive performance against Fury. My point is, sometimes you get brought back down to reality. We all got a little carried away with the Nganu situation. I'm talking about the media, the fans, and even Francis himself probably started believing a little bit too much of his hype and publicity. We put too much value on that one great performance and ranked him way too high in the top 10. How can you have a top 10 heavyweight when the guy isn't even a full-time boxer and has had one professional fight? That was silly, and Joshua's victory showed how silly that was. I guarantee you Nganu isn't in anyone's top 10 anymore after this loss. We all got a nice wake-up call about getting too far ahead of ourselves with new fighters before they've proved it repeatedly. Atlas has a fair point there. The boxing world at large may have gotten a bit too enamored with Nganu's raw abilities and prematurely anointed him as the second coming without truly earned credentials. This humbling loss is a reminder that even the most athletic phenoms need to properly develop and prove themselves over the long haul first. So where does Nganu go from here after such an inauspicious result? Does he scrap the whole boxing experiment and go back to his MMA roots? Or does he stick with the sweet science, address his flaws in the gym, and continue pursuing his heavyweight boxing dreams? Teddy sees only one logical path forward. The guy is a physical freak of nature and has already tasted the glory of being a world champion across the street in the UFC. You don't throw in the towel on your athletic gifts and fighting dreams because of one bad night against an all-time great like Joshua. No, you lick your wounds, get back in the gym with the right teachers and support, and keep grinding. Nganu is still young enough to make adjustments and fix the obvious issues like balance, defense, and developing a more diverse offensive flow. He'll never be a technical wizard, but with his monstrous power and unshakable grit, he can still be a major factor if he puts in the proper work and gets quality experience under his belt. Things may have been derailed slightly, but the Nganu freight train doesn't need to go completely off the rails unless his mentality changes. I fully expect his team to get him readjusted and focused again on the sweet science. Because when you have physical gifts like his, you owe it to yourself to maximize them and see how far they can take you when paired with real development and killer instinct. So there you have it, folks. In the eyes of the highly respected Teddy Atlas, Nganu earned himself a harsh schooling from Anthony Joshua, but his potential boxing dreams are far from completely extinguished. It'll just require singular dedication, real technical refinement, and sticking to the process to properly develop his overwhelming natural gifts. Perhaps Nganu's rise to relevance in the sport may have been slightly overinflated after his eye-catching fury performance. But with perseverance and the right guidance, Atlas sees no reason why the athletic phenom still can't potentially become a major factor in the heavyweight division one day, just not overnight like some were prematurely proclaiming. 